Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So, I decided to start this new video series where I document what each year in the life of an MD-PhD student looks like, obviously starting with year one. So the plan is to take you through the preclinical years into grad schools and then eventually back into the clinical years to show you what all that uh, looks like. I plan to give you more about my thought process going through the program, what my thoughts were as a student, how I studied, some of the challenges that I faced, as well as what life looked like for me outside of school and how I tried navigating that whole work-life dilemma. So for those of you who don't know, the MD-PhD program is a program that is designed to train physician scientists, people who are integrated in both the clinical and scientific and research aspects of medicine. And the end goal is to produce someone who is well versed with the clinical concepts who can treat patients and work with them in the clinic but then also have one foot in the lab carry out experiments design these experiments really ideally the goal is to have someone who can um, easily translate between both fields so the specific program structure varies from school to school some schools are a bit more traditional where you will do two years of preclinical, then enter graduate school and then go back to finish your clinical years other schools have changed that up where you will do three years, for example, of your med medical school and in fact you'll get some clinical work done before you even step into grad school and then you do your grad school portion, go back, finish up a year of uh, what are the, the remaining year of your clinical. I've even seen other programs where you can do a year of preclinical, go into research and then you come back out and then you finish your last three years of medical school. But I think the most traditional, the most common route that you'll see is some form of doing maybe a year and a half to two years of preclinical, then starting graduate school to do your PhD, finishing that up, and then coming back out to do your clinical. So to give you a little bit more background about myself, I started my MD PhD training in 2017 at the University of Maryland. And my program was a bit more traditional where I did two years of preclinical, took my first board exam, step one, then started graduate school. Currently, I am still a graduate student. I'm in the fourth year of my PhD, and my plan is to do it in five years, then go back and finish my clinical, my clinical curriculum, and then eventually enter residency. And so like I said, this series will go year by year, and obviously we're gonna, we're gonna start with year one. I started back in August 2017, and almost immediately we were thrown into anatomy. I remember the second day of school, the very next day, started lecture, and I'll be honest with you, this whole process was very daunting, it was very scary for me, especially because I had never taken anything like anatomy, this was the first time I'd seen it. There's a lot of memorization and it's a class I had no experience with. The way our school was set up was that we had two hour blocks of lecture and then another two hours of small group. And during anatomy, the small group portion was actually our anatomy lab. So essentially we had four hours each day. Our morning started with two hours of anatomy lecture each day, followed by the two hours of small group or anatomy lab. And then as expected, it was extremely difficult because we were expected to learn and memorize all of the muscles, veins, arteries, and bones in the human body. Okay, well maybe not all of them, but it definitely felt like we were. And I'll be honest, it wasn't something I was very good at. I really had to dig deep and figure out how to study, how to, how to ch navigate this challenge because before this, a lot of this stuff, a lot of uh, school and all that, that came relatively easily to me, but this is a whole nother beast. It, it, you hear this a lot when you, when you talk to anyone about medical school, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Another analogy that I was told about was that it's like you're given two pancakes a day and you're expected to eat those, and if you don't, uh, it doesn't matter because the next day you're gonna, still going to get those two pancakes. And so if you don't eat, if you don't finish those pancakes today, tomorrow you're expected to eat four. And then if you don't do that, then eight and, or six and eight and so on. So it was a very similar idea. I think that really does a good job of describing what medical school is like. There's just so much information and you really got to figure out how to, how to navigate, how to learn that information. The first exam, I didn't really do well. Like I, I tried studying on my own. I was trying to take down notes and memorize everything from the lectures and I didn't do too well. I think I ended up getting a C on my first exam. And then starting from that second exam, I started trying new things. I, I tried flashcards via Anki, uh, which was helpful, but I think for me, the best thing was that I actually made connections. I started, I, I made friends in medical school and I started studying with those friends. For me, it's always been, it's always worked really well to study with others and teach each other these concepts because once you start talking about things out loud, it really solidifies the understanding of that concept in your brain. And even then, it was a struggle until the very end 
I was so close to getting to see in the class, but I think I made the cutoff by like 0.5 or something like that. So I, I did end up getting a B in anatomy, but it was a very, very close call. Uh, and it was definitely one of the most stressful times of my life. Uh, I had to really figure, like that first, first two, three months, I was canceling plans of family and friends left and right. Uh, as I really was, as I really became overwhelmed with, with uh, studying anatomy in, in medical school. So yeah, anatomy was a fun introduction to the medical school life, but the en end of anatomy also marked the uh, the end of our first three months in medical school. And it was actually at this point where we had our white coat ceremony. A lot of schools will have their white coat ceremony before, but we had ours right after the end of anatomy. It was almost like a right of uh, privilege or that you had gone through anatomy and made it out alive, and now you were finally rewarded by being able to wear your white coat. And really, this was like my first break in, in medical school in like three months, uh, and I enjoyed those one or two days off. And when I came back, fortunately, things were a bit easier because we started our biochemistry and genetics block, and a lot of this was review of concepts and topics that I covered in undergrad, but with a bit more focus on disease and, and physiology. And then as the next few weeks flew by, I started to enjoy medical school more and more, especially because I was able to deepen those connections with, uh, with those social connections with friends. I set up a regular study session with one of my friends uh, and we would study pretty much every day, or at least when he could drag me out of bed to come study with him. Truth be told, I spent a lot of time that year cuddling with my cat and he really had to drag me away to get me to study. And then the other key point was that this was, I started to get a better hang of what worked for me and what didn't. So I think flashcards worked for me. Writing out lecture notes definitely did not. Just trying to memorize lectures straight up did not work for me. What helped me was setting up the study sessions, talking it out with my friends, and then going back and doing flashcards. And I think another really cool thing around this time was that I was introduced to the study tool called Osmosis, which really helps foster a collaborative environment. Essentially what people do, what you can do is you can upload your lectures there and then other people can make flashcards and study materials off of those lectures. And so it's very well coordinated. And I think that really helped me organize myself in medical school and collaborate with other people to make these flashcards. The other really cool thing about, uh, about Osmosis is that they have some really great videos that go over these tough medical concepts, which aren't, weren't always well explained in lecture, but I've always felt like once I found the Osmosis video for that concept, it became a lot easier to understand. Multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease of the central nervous system which includes the brain and the spinal cord. Now we had a few additional aspects of our training in, a, in addition to the preclinical coursework. One was our community service requirement. And the idea here was to have students serve and connect with the, with the community that they would be taking care of. So for my community service placement, I was placed as a mentor at a nearby Baltimore City public school. And so essentially every week, me and two other students would, would go down to the school and work with fourth graders to engage in science lessons. And so essentially every week we have to come up with like fun science, scientific experiments for these kids. Nothing too big, but just fun stuff like, you know, Coke and Mentos or creating slime, that kind of stuff. I thought this was a really fun experience. I had a lot of fun with the kids uh, and it was something that I wouldn't have expected to do otherwise. So I, th I thought that was pretty good. Now, in addition to that, we're, we were required to do an introduction to clinical medicine course, which is exactly what it sounds like. We were placed in a clinic and required to shadow our attendings and residents. And then also uh, we actually had the opportunity to start learning how to take patient histories and interview patients. Uh, this was really good because you know, it re really gives you an idea of what it's like in the clinic well before third year medicine. And you start building up that skill set, uh, the skills of interviewing a patient, learning how to take their histories, learning how to listen, which was also really important, a really big um, challenge for me. And then picking out the relevant details from that story and putting it together in a full note. So those are the skills that I started learning as a first year, which is obviously very relevant. And I thought overall uh, was also a very enjoyable experience. So the third additional component was unique to MD PhD students. We were required to partake in biweekly journal clubs. And these were really great because it helped us stay in the loop as far as our scientific training. We were essentially discussing and critiquing scientific articles every two weeks. So, uh, and then also staying in the loop as far as like what, you know, new relevant scientific discoveries in some of these, some of uh, the fields that we were covering. 
which obviously was a uh, very good, a, a very good way to kind of keep that scientific research aspect of our brains flowing while we were so busy with uh, our preclinical curriculum. Now following genetics, we started our physiology block. In this course, we put together the previous two blocks of anatomy and molecular biology and biochemistry to understand how critical systems such as blood pressure maintenance, kidney function, and the heart pumping blood actually work. And this is perhaps my favorite course of first year. It was in the middle of this block that we had spring break. Back in November, after our final anatomy exam, I actually found a really good deal to go to South Africa, which is a country that I've always wanted to go to. And I could only go for six days because of how short my spring break was. So there was a lot of back and forth as far as whether I should take the deal or not. And I'm so glad I did because that was probably one of the best trips I've ever taken. Now it's funny because uh, for me, it's a country that I always wanted to go to and I, had, I was saving up money to buy a TV, but then I found this deal, so I took it and it was totally worth it. Definitely worth way more than buying a TV. It's an amazing country filled with amazing wildlife and food and scenery. Uh, one of the most beautiful countries I've ever visited. So this trip was really, I think it really changed my perspective of what I could do as a medical student and how I could actually navigate that work-life balance. Um, and as you'll see in coming videos, I think this was, uh, I started traveling more and more as a medical student, but this was really the stepping off point for me where I realized that that is not only something that I wanted to do, but something that I really could do if I played my cards right. In retrospect, I'm really glad that I went because this was the break that I needed before entering what was actually the most difficult part of medical school yet. We capped off the year with neuroscience and it was something I was looking forward to actually because I, I'm really interested in neuro. I want I wanted, I wanted to become a neurologist. But what I wasn't ready for was just how difficult this course would be. It was honestly the most difficult course I had taken in my, I took in my first year. We had to learn the various structures of the brain, where they are, what they look like, and it would be really hard to identify those in the images that we were supposed to look at. We also learned about the various neural tracts, and some of the hardest and most thought-provoking questions were asking about lesions of these neural tracts. Essentially, if you saw a deficiency, some kind of motor or uh, you know verbal deficiency in a patient, questions were really focused on testing whether you could use that information to figure out and pinpoint where that lesion was and which neural tract was affected. I think this part was, was really difficult, but I actually had fun with this part. It was the anatomy portion that I, I really didn't like. We had two exams in this course, and despite all this difficulty of learning the neuroanatomy, I actually got an A in the first part of the course, or in the first exam of the course, and I was so excited because I was on track to get an A in the course overall. Now coming to the second exam, we had two parts of that exam. The first part was focused on some of this neural tract stuff that I mentioned earlier and I, I did pretty well in that part. I think I got a high B. So I knew what I needed at that point to get an A in the class and I was so close. What I wasn't ready for was that second part, the second part of this, of this exam was all focused on the neuroanatomy that I learned in the first half of the course and it had been like a month since I last saw it. The thing you realize about medical school is that a lot of knowledge comes in, but a lot of knowledge also goes out. And if you're not constantly reviewing that information, it can disappear just like that. Now for the past month, I was so focused on learning the neural tracks that I completely neglected the neuroanatomy that I learned in the first half of the course. And I thought, I didn't, I guess, I didn't realize that it would be that have you been focused on this exam? So obviously I focus on the new stuff. And I remember opening up, looking at that exam, realizing that I had not seen this stuff in over four weeks. And that was a disaster. I actually completely bombed the second half of the exam and I went from hoping to get an A to just barely getting a C in the class. Now that was a depressing way to end what was otherwise a pretty solid year. I remember being so disappointed, just so frustrated with how that went. And I think that was like a really good moment for me to sort of reflect and realize that, you know, it's not the end. I have three years of medical school left. I have a whole PhD in front of me. There are other things to life. Um, and it's not something I could beat myself over. I, I did so well in undergrad and to get this course was, was uh, very, to get this grade in this course was, was so shocking for me. But, you know, that's just how things go. Uh, there are you're going to run into a lot of roadblocks in, in medicine, especially uh, during your first year of medical school. There's so much to adjust to. There's so much to change up in terms of your learning style, in terms of your study habits and organizing your work life balance that you can't really beat yourself up too much. Uh, there will be some mistakes some failures along the way. And that's just part of it. That's just part of the process. 
that's a part of any process in life, right? Anyway, that's it for this video. That's really a uh, brief recap of my first year of medical school. If you have any questions or if there's anything that I didn't cover in this video that you would like to know more about, just leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, if there are any suggestions you have or anything that you would like to see in a future video, definitely let me know and I'll try to, uh, I'll try to address those too. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you next time.